All right. Every time I do one of these things, I hold the camera a different way. I hold the phone either the camera to the left or the camera to the right. And it always takes me a minute to figure out where I'm looking. You gotta get the right eye line. This is an impromptu video. <laughs> uh, what's going on? So today I'm going to tell the story of how I got into comic books. Um, not an exciting story by any stretch of the imagination. I was three years old. I may have been two. I had an older brother. Still do. Three years older than me. He went into the kids section of the public library. And he got a book called Origins of Marvel Comics. It was a graphic novel. Maybe you've heard of graphic novels. And it was first first edition. And that's what he grabbed. And we had already had some comic books. But this is the one that really stuck with me. And it was the origins of some of the most popular Marvel comic characters. Um, you may have heard of some of these guys. Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Thor, probably Iron Man, Hulk... It was only six or seven, maybe eight on the outside. Sons of Origins of Marvel Comic had less popular characters like Daredevil in it. We got that one the next time we went to the library. So my brother read it, and then I read it. And that was pretty much how it went. Um, whenever he had a comic book or something, because he's five and I'm two. He's six and I'm three. For those of you who are doing the math, we're about three years apart. So that's how I got into comics. That was the start. Then my brother, when I was eight, and I read everything. I mean, I was a reader, like you wouldn't believe. But anything my brother liked, I liked. I didn't watch Sesame Street growing up. I watched uh, uh, He-Man and Robotech. Um, other kids were talking about what was going on with Mr. Rogers, and I'm talking about, you know, G.I. Joe and Transformers. Because anything, ask any, ask any older brother. Little brothers are annoying. I was annoying, I assume. My brother certainly found me to be so. But anything he was into, I was into. And I could keep up pretty well. Uh, maybe not at three, but definitely by six. And then when I turned eight, my brother was 11. We found out about uh, comic book subscriptions through the mail. Marvel started doing these. So he got New Mutants, and I got Silver Surfer. And I had to, I took all my money, all the money I had saved up to pay eight bucks for a 12 month subscription to the Silver Surfer. Eight dollars for a 12 month subscription. Do that math out real quick. That's less than a dollar a comic, which is about what the price should be, honestly. We want, if you're looking for new readership, which the current comic industry should be looking for, you want cheap comic books that kids can pick up and their parents look at the price tag and say, okay. I know. Isn't that a great marketing campaign? Your parents will say, okay, it's only a buck. Okay. Instead of like four bucks a comic. So anyway, my cat is sitting on my foot. So I got the Silver Surfer. I actually have the entire third volume of the Silver Surfer. For those of you who don't know, the first volume came out in what, the 60s, 70s. It was 18 issues. It did not sell well. It was a double-sized issue. It came out every other month. It's done by uh, John Buscema as the artist and Stanley as a writer. And I've got that in trade paperback. And it's not great. It's interesting. But it's not. They took a lot of time in the storytelling. There's the camera again. They take a lot of time in the storytelling. And so it goes. They just these long, sweeping vistas and beautiful artwork and slow slow stories. Uh, volume 2 was technically, what, a two-part, two-issue comic. It was just a, a short story about Mephisto and Shalabal and Zenla. And then Volume 3 started in 1987. It was written by one of the greatest comic book writers of all time, Steve Englehart. Uh, a number of different artists on the book, but the main artist for the first part of the run was Ron Lim. Steve Englehart's run on the Silver Surfer is the definitive run. It is the first 31 issues of Volume 3. Volume 3 would go on to be 147 issues, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong, but it's about there. And each writer got progressively worse. It went uh, Steve Englehart, Jim Starlin, who just used the book to bring back his space characters, Captain Marvel and Thanos and Drax the Destroyer and Gamora and Adam Warlock. It, when Jim Starlin... Jim Starlin's not a bad writer. 
But when he wrote The Silver Surfer, he didn't write about The Silver Surfer. He wrote about Adam Warlock, Captain Marvel, um, Gamora, uh, Pip the Troll, etc. Drax the Destroyer. So then after that, uh, what happened after that? Ron, Ron Lim came on, a newspaper writer. Came in and wrote Silver Surfer. He did an okay job. I didn't realize how bad it was at the time. I realized it was much worse later on. He was not very good at keeping power levels consistent. Um, <laughs> it's like he wasn't a comic book writer. I forget what happened after that. I stopped really collecting. I went back and bought the back issues when they were half price on a sale. That's how I finished my collection. Um, I followed Ron Mars over to the new Green Lantern. And I finished with... Uh, that. Anyway, that's my story of how I got into comic books. Bye.